Hello and welcome to a Football Manager 2017 experiment, the first of many that are going to be coming up on the channel soon. And this time we're going to be looking at what happens if a billionaire came to Serbia. Now this links into a previous save on my channel. Uh, we did a series with Red Star Belgrade where we tried to get them as far as we could in the Champions League to try and recreate them, winning it back in 1991. And we did five seasons of it and we couldn't quite win it. We uh, in fact, we didn't come close. I think we came came to the second knockout round and got knocked out there, and that's as far as we went. Maybe the quarterfinals. I'm not sure. In fact, that might even be the quarterfinals, second knockout round. So instead, if I wasn't able to do it normally with Red Star, I thought, why not give every team in Serbia a billion pounds? So that's what we've done. If we look to the Serbian Super League, here we go. Serbian Super League. All the teams are in there. I've used the in-game editor to edit the club details. Go to finances and give everyone a billion. And hopefully we'll see uh, quite a progression in the Serbian Super League. Right now it's the 29th most reputable league in Europe. So hopefully that will push up and we'll get better uh, qualification places. And the uh, the reputation will be clubs will start to improve. Better players will come through and hopefully uh, we'll see a, a Serbian team winning the Champions League sooner rather than later. In this episode I'm going to go three years into the future to start off with and then we'll go in future episodes further into the future and see what happens. But for these first three seasons my predictions will be that some teams are going to spend big, uh, some teams are not going to spend so much big, they're going to invest in youth instead. I think we'll probably move up to around 15th or so in the competition rankings, I don't think it will move much higher than that. Um, that's probably me being, me being a bit ambitious. And I don't think anyone's going to go very far in Europe. I think Europa League maybe, we might get to the knockout stages, but I doubt Champions League, anything's going to happen. Because no one's going to be able to bring in huge players because the reputation in the league and in the clubs just isn't there yet. So let me know what you think your predictions are down in the comments before we zoom on into the future. So we're a year into the future now, and as you can see, Partizan won the league from Red Star by four points, which is quite good for them. Um, if you don't understand how a serving league works, first of all, I'll just show you how that works. So you've got a preliminary phase where everyone plays twice, uh, so that's 30 games, and once you've all played those 30 games, it gets split in two. So the top eight go into a group A, and the bottom eight go into a group B, which is where this comes in. So your points are halved, so obviously Partizan finish on 60 points, and they got halved to 30 points. And then you play everyone once in this in your group. So the top group battle for European in the championship place, and then group B battle against relegation. So what happened here was obviously Partizan won the group, uh, Red Star second and the Pradak third. So that means that means Partizan will be in the Champions League next season with Red Star and the Pradak in the Euro Cup, uh, Metalak and Vosvodak get, getting relegated. So they've all had their billion pounds, and the Serbian billionaires only come in for one season, so no one's going to get another billion pounds. The teams that relegated keep their billion, but the teams that get promoted won't literally um so it's going to be a bit of a yo-yo between metalak and rosvadak i imagine um i don't think there's going to be much chance of them not getting promoted next season so let's look at the transfers then to see if there's been any big movements so we go back to last season uh if we go to the fee there we go the top price was at uh, six million for harold presidio presidio from shenzhen to kukariki kukariki making the biggest say where do they finish uh overall they finished fifth so even their, their big summer signing they couldn't quite get anywhere near the Champions League places uh, Jean Kwasi uh, from Wuhan I think that's how you say his name these are, these are hard names to pronounce some of these going from Wuhan to Partizan for 4 million and then two players leaving uh, Partizan for 2.2 .2 and 1.8 respectively but that's going to 5 million that's a good deal for them to be fair Red Star not being on any of these receiving transfers their biggest was 700k from a uh, chap from Vojvodina so They've not spent big, but they have sold Plasvic for one and a half million. Plasvic, if you remember to the Red Star series I did, was one of the best players and key players we had. Uh, we had him for three seasons, I think, before we we sold him. We couldn't really replace him. He was too good, to be fair. So it was a mistake selling him. They've also got rid of uh, Uros Rakic here. And Uros Rakic developed very nicely for me. He was subject to bids of about 20 million when I had him. So they've, they've, they've let their good players go and... Perhaps is why they didn't win the league and why they won't win the league next season, maybe. That's probably a prediction you can make. Crucially, though, after that first season, the league's gone up to 23rd overall, so we may be seeing some more European spots. If we look to the, the rules, maybe, and go to Group A, are there any more places awarded? So, obviously, the season before, Red Star, Partizan and Vojvodina were the teams in Europe. Red Star were in the Champions League, so if we look at their schedule for last season. As you can see, Champions League qualifying, they won 6-0 against, oh, I, I don't know who his team are, from Latvia. They beat a team in Latvia to get through, and they got all the way through 
to the Champions Cup playoff and lost to Olympiacos. Very interestingly, that's the exact same thing that I did in my first season Red Star. I lost to Olympiacos at this stage. That's really weird. Uh, they got into Group A of the uh, Europa League and ended up losing just about every game. And a tough group, to be fair. They had uh, Spartak, Moscow, St. Etienne and Bilbao. That's a tough group. They didn't get any points in that, so I don't blame them. Partizan were also another team in Europe. If we look at their schedule for last season, they got into they were in the Euro Cup and they got all the way through to the group stages where they did a bit better, I think, by looks of things. Um, and actually, did they did they go through and win their group? Did they get through it? They did. They got through to the Euro Cup first knockout round, but getting knocked out to West Ham. So that's a good show from them, to be fair, to get through to that far on the competition. That should really boost the ratings a bit and boost their reputation so they can get some better players in for next season. We may start to see Partizan run away with things a little bit in the Serbian League. Vojvodina were the other team in the Euro Cup and they got all the way through to the playoff legs uh, where they got knocked out to Sparta Prague 2-1 on aggregate which is quite unfortunate for them but they had a good showing to be fair as well they make good use of their billion pounds so hopefully next season uh, they won't be in it actually but next season hopefully Nepredak, Partizan and Red Star will get further in the competitions so I think now we're going to zoom on another year into the future and see what happens again so another year into the future and it's almost like nothing's changed. Partizan win the league again with Red Star and Napredak coming up behind them overall. Uh, Spartak and Slobba getting relegated. Uh, Sloboda, one of the teams that got promoted, but Proletar, the other team that got promoted, didn't get relegated despite not having any money. So that's quite interesting to see that really the league's reputation isn't improving too much and the players can't come in. So even if you've got loads of money, you're not going to be able to attract all the best players to the, the league. So that's why Proletar have stayed up and Spartak have gone down. So another successful season for Partizan then. Let's see who they brought in this season, what kind of money they're spending on players. Um, last season's transfer is the highest one. Down from last season's 6 million, only four, uh, three and a half right to 4.4 million was for um, Keita from Alves to Red Star. Red Star having the three biggest transfers. They've obviously decided to spend this season after not doing anything last season. Uh, Partizan behind them spending 2.6 and 2.6 on other players. So there's more teams starting to spend money, but... Well, I say more teams, it's literally just Partizan and Red Star spending the money. Other teams really aren't doing much. In fact, loads of players are leaving the league, which is a bit uh, unfortunate. No one's really bringing players in, but no one's really spending the money, and I guess it's because there's just not the reputation in the league at the moment. If we have a look, it's gone up to 20th overall. It was 23rd last season, it's gone up to 20th, so maybe there was a bit of success in Europe to boost things up a little bit, but it's not... Obviously, had the meteoric rise that did the season before, and maybe my prediction of 15th will be about right, even though I said that was a little bit ambitious. Maybe they'll get up there next season. So if we look at Group A, as you can see, uh, continental, com continental qualification has uh, stayed the same for next season, but prize money has gone up a little bit, which is quite nice to see. Uh, not that they need it, because they're all on, you know, they've got a billion pounds in the bank, but it's nice to see that there's been a bit, a bit of progression made. I don't think there was much progression made at all when I was manager of Red Star, so that's nice to see. So let's look at Partizan's progression in the Champions League. If we look at their schedule for last season, uh, we'll look at Champions League. They it looks like they lost in their first qualifying round, actually. The Champions Cup um, second qualifying round, they lost to this team, Happel from Israel. Uh, apparently they lost that in the first leg, which was quite unfortunate for them. So they went out straight away, which you wouldn't really expect, I suppose, would you? Look at Red Star then, look at their schedule. They were in the uh, Euro Cup last season. How did they get on? They won their first qualifying round. They won their second qualifying round, but went out to Fiorentina in the third qualifying round. So they had a, they had a, a tough challenge, to be fair, to, to get past Fiorentina. But again, they've not made the group stages, so that's another another disappointing season, really, for Red Star, I've got to say. And looking at the parade act, it doesn't seem like they've done much better either. They won their first qualifying round against Slavia Sofia. Uh, they went, won their second qualifying leg, but then went out to Hajuk in the second qualifying leg, uh, losing 3 0 in aggregate. So. There was no success in Europe, which is a little bit worrying, really. You'd expect to see a little bit more than that from the Serbian teams after a billion pounds have been pumped into them. In fact, how much money have they got left? In the Pradak, they have got, uh, they've got 900 million left, so they're doing quite well for themselves, to be fair. Red Star, then, how much have they got left? Edit their club details. They've only got 600 million left. Uh, so they've obviously spent 300 million just out of the... gone, straight away, but they've... Perhaps they've upgraded their youth facilities. I probably should have checked this beforehand, to be fair, but they have done fairly well with that. And partisan then they have got 900 million left so red star has spent quite a bit to be fair um but it looks like they've got that same facilities as partisan so i don't know i wonder where the partisan uh, the red star's money has gone perhaps they just put it into investing in youth and things like that i don't know but interesting to see how they've lost 300 million and nearly a third of all their money that they had 
So we're going to go another year into the future now, the last year on this episode, and we're going to see how they do a third year into the future, and hopefully we'll see some improvements. And so we've gone one more year into the future again to take us three years in total, and for a third season in a row, Partizan have won the league from Red Star, this time 10 points clear, and uh, loads of goal difference in there as well, to be fair. So Partizan clearly becoming the superpower in Serbian football, as they probably have been uh, in recent years. Vojvodina coming third, getting that final uh, Europa League spot, which is quite nice to see. The Predak finishing well off the pace, down in 8th place, so something went wrong with them this season, clearly. Uh, the teams that don't have a billion in their bank accounts, the teams that have been promoted, they've both gone back down, uh, which is unfortunate for them, obviously. Vosvodak got relegated in the first season, and clearly they bounced back straight away, and now they finish finished 6th this season, so all their money's been doing quite well for them. A quick look at transfers shows that money has really been spent now. Partizan spending 18 million, rising to 32 million for uh, Christian Basogol uh, from Henan, from China. That's quite a lot of money. 18.5 million again, rising to 23 million for uh, Nemanja Gudelij. That's a lot of money. Uh, importantly though, Milan Gajic, he's gone to Red Star. I think I bought him about this time actually, in uh, in the Red Star series when I did it. So, Milan Gajic obviously going from Bordeaux to Red Star for more than I paid for him. I only paid about 5 million. They've paid uh, 5 5.75, rising to nearly 10 million. Unfortunately though, Ivan, the uh, striker I had, he was absolutely brilliant for me uh, with Red Stars, gone to Partizan instead from uh, Benfica for uh, 4.6, rising to 7.75. I only paid 6 million for him. So, but I think it's a good transfer to be fair. There's some good good teams um, being, some good players being brought into the league. Obviously, all it is is Red Star and Partizan. They're the ones that are splashing the cash. They're the ones that have got a bit of reputation because they're in the Champions League and the Europa, uh, Europa League. Only one big transfer leaving, really, and that is Dusan Vlovic to uh, Real Madrid. He's a big star in the future. I think he's got quite a bit of potential on him. But other than that, loads of players coming in for a lot of money, but no one else in the league really spending that much, to be fair. Napredak spent, I think, just over a million, but that's on a player from Vojvodina. You know, no one else is really spending big, which is a bit interesting, really. You would have thought with a billion pounds, they'd be spending a lot of money. So let's have a look then, see how Partizan did in the uh, Champions League last season. Look at their schedule for last last season. They uh, they got through the, uh, the the qualifying rounds all the way through to the uh, the playoffs where they lost to Dinamo uh, in um, Croatia. That's quite unfortunate. They won the first leg but just lost in the second leg, which is a bit nasty for them. So they got through to the Euro Cup instead where they had AC Milan in their group. Uh, they also had Victoria Pleasant and Manchester City, so that's a tough group to be fair, but they managed to beat Man City in the second time of asking after they lost them 3-0, they then beat them 3-0 um, after having beaten Victoria Pleasant 1-0 and drew with AC Milan. So it looks like they may have got through the group in the Euro Cup group to be fair. They lost to AC Milan, they drew with Victoria Pleasant. I don't think that that might be enough to get them through. Apparently it wasn't. They didn't quite get through, which is uh, a bit unfortunate. Let's have a look at that group actually agonisingly missed out on uh, getting into the next stage. So actually, if they're competing with AC Milan and Man City, I mean, that kind of shows the quality in Partizan's team, and hopefully in the future they really will start to march on and get into the later stages of the of the group. Red Star not doing as well. They got into the second qualifying round um, of the Euro Cup, won that, but then got knocked out to Olympiakos once again in another qualifying round. So they lost them in the Champions League and now the Euro Cup qualifying round. So there's no European football for them, unfortunately, uh, last season, but hopefully they'll go further in this coming season. And the Prodak suffering to the same fate. They get knocked out in the qualifying rounds uh, to stay at Bucharest, losing an aggregate uh, 4-2 on aggregate. So not a good start for them, really. Neither No one's made a big impact in the Champions League this season, which is a little bit annoying. I kind of thought there'd be a big a big step. And actually, it's reflected because they've, got down, they've dropped down one to 21st in the rankings. So clearly, things haven't been going too well for them in Serbia. And the billionaire's money's not been going too well. So the billionaire said to me, he said, right, well, things aren't going to plan. I'm going to give it each team another billion. So every team's going to have a billion pounds back in the bank account. We're going to see um, see how far they can get. So next episode, we're going to uh, we'll go three years into the future each time rather than just one year and see if there's progression over three years and see what we can do instead. If you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you next time for when a billionaire puts a billion pounds more into the Serbian teams.